you go for a walk in the woods on a winter's day, like these woods outside Dover, you might hear the sound of your feet crunching the leaves, or you might hear the wind in the trees, or you might hear the sound of different traffic. But if you stop and listen, not just with your ears, but with your imagination, you might hear a sound in these woods that meant life and death 140 or so years ago. The time was 1861. The bugle call summoned soldiers to the Battle of Fort Donelson. The bugler is John Walsh, who guides visitors today over this battle site. The battle did occur in February between the 12th and the uh, 16th, which day the Confederates did surrender the fort. The two forts, uh, one Henry on the Tennessee River and Donaldson on the Cumberland River, uh, the two rivers were vital to the southern economy in many ways. These were the rivers that got the goods to the individual, the, the individual towns. Um, they were essentially the I-24 and I-65 of the Civil War era. And when the South lost Donaldson, uh, most consider this is where the South lost the war. John knows a lot about that lost war. He became fascinated at an early age. It was probably started about the age of 13. I was interested in military history and a really good friend of mine, they, they all did Civil War reenacting and invited me out on one of their trips. And after that first uh, weekend with them, dressing up and, and playing soldier for a weekend, I really got hooked on it. So John put his passion to work, opening a guide service and Civil War relic shop in Dover, just outside the Fort Donelson National Battlefield. A buddy of mine just dug this one. And it, it was fired from Porter's Battery. It's a six pound. People come from all over the world to tour the battlefield and to touch things long ago soldiers treasured. I think it really adds a third dimension to the war. Uh, a lot of people do research and study, study the war, but I think actually holding a piece of history in your hand really brings it closer, it makes it real, um, adds that personal touch to the history. Some of the things revolutionized death in what was called the first modern war. We have um, several Spencer carbines, which at that time were the uh, modern advancements in terms of firearms. It was a seven shot repeating carbine. It also came in a rifle form. Some of the Confederates said that the Yankees could load on Sunday and fire all through the week um, with as many rounds as it could fire. So it was a, a very highly technological advancement in terms of firearm superiority over a standard musket. And there are other things, people really, revealing the reality of the war that rolled over them. Some of the other artifacts, some of the more personal artifacts or the images, which I'm personally very fond of, um, I think that really adds, a, uh, in terms of a third dimension, really looking into the eyes of those who saw the war firsthand. You can see some of the images very early on in the war uh, with a, lot, a bit of a spark in their eye. And as you get to images that you, can, you know were taken later in the war, you can kind of see how um, the sunken eyes and the, the despaired look on their face really brings that image straight to you. This one has a marking, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that goes, it's a complete set. With that. John's wife, Nikki, also a reenactor, feels the power in the pieces she touches. Yeah. Just being able to handle something that, you know, a soldier handled, or, you know, Is possibly a soldier handled that yeah. many years ago, uh, you can't get any closer to the Civil War than actually holding a buckle, you know, that was dug up out of the ground that, you know, a soldier last touched. You just wonder who owned it and what kind of life they had and, you know, if they were, um, if they had hard times or if they were happy at the time. And When John takes the eager visitor out to the battlefield, you can tell he revels in trying to bring that long ago time back to life for a few moments, retelling, for instance, a daring escape from the doomed and surrounded Fort Donaldson. It was the... Uh, morning of the surrender. At about 4 a.m., uh, Forrest and about 1,500 men met on the other side of the creek over there, yeah. which at the time was about 100 yards wide. 
and nobody wanted to venture off into the creek. Most everybody was on horseback. He initially started out with about 400 men. Men started unhitching the horses from cavalry artillery pieces. Um, you know, they were grabbing everything they could to come with Forrest because they knew he was coming out. And um, Forrest then went out into the river and found that the water was only about skirt deep on the saddles. And uh, they proceeded to cross. When you listen to John, not only with your ears, but with your imagination, you can almost see and hear the ghostly bugler who called men and boys to fight at the Battle of Fort Donelson in Dover. Tennessee Civil War 150 is made possible in part by Tennessee Department of Education, Tennessee Civil War Sesquicentennial Commission, and Tennessee Civil War National Heritage Area.